Okay, guys, let's start. Let's start. It's time to start. Guys, today we are going to see the three price action setup. This is from the series, how to trade price action like a pro. It's not really very hard to understand the concept. What is hard is to master them, okay? It's to be 10,000 hours executing, executing the setups on the live market. So let's have a fantastic webinar today. You are free to post any questions at any time. We are going to look at the three setups. We are going to look at the examples. And then we are going to go directly to the chart. And after this, the next webinars are going to be hardcore price action trading where we can an analyze together uh, the market. Okay? Because now, after this, everybody's going to speak the same language. All right. So let's get directly into the first setup. <laughs> good, Pan, good. Let's focus here. The first setup is the retest is the retest. What is a retest? Basically is, as the word says, is a test, a retest of a level, that is the red line. Price is making two highs here. It made two highs. It broke with a speed, and after some time, it retested the level. Okay? This is a classical level. It works in any time frame. It works in any market. And this is going to repeat over and over and over and over again. Okay? So, what more do you want? I mean, what else do you want? <laughs> so, let, let's explain a little bit the psychology behind this setup. How I understand this. Price is going up. Make a high or two high. It can be only one high. And supply appears to the market. Something makes the people, the buyer and the seller to change their mindset and they perceive the price as an expensive price. So there are more, there is more supply than demand. Prices fall. Next time we test the same level, the same thing happens again. The people look at the left. What happened at the last time? We sell. So let's try to do the same thing. So we make money and there is again more supply than demand. But the third time, it is not going to work like that. The third time, for whatever reason, it's an uptrend. The, the same traders that were selling on the two highs on the left, they are not that day. They are on holidays. Because, guys, uh, open your eyes. You depend on other traders to move the market. You depend on, on others. If they don't sell, here, if you want to go short and they don't sell, you are not going to make money. You depend on others. Anyway, so... The third time, this was expensive, expensive breakout is a shift on psychology here, okay? The people who sold, put the stop above, get a stop it out, and maybe reverse, some people go wrong. So now it changed, it changed the psychology. Now, the next time the price visit this area, we are expecting it to be a cheap price, it's a change on behavior, of behavior, change of psychology. It was expensive, expensive, breakout, now it's cheap the next time. Okay, any questions about this? Anything you have questions? Okay, yeah, it's a retracement. It can be called that way, it's a retracement of this bull, of this, la of this bull leg, okay? Keep in mind the strongest the market it is, usually the, the, the shorter the retracement are, because if it's very strong, the people are gonna jump um, earlier. Also, if this level is very strong, many times price didn't touch the level, so you don't get triggered, you don't get your entry uh, on the market. You, it happened to me, it's gonna happen to many people, you put an order and the price is stop five tips above and reverse because there is so many people wanting to wanting to buy there that it changes direction before it triggers your entry. So this is a picture, okay? Now on the chart we are going to look at what are the problems we can encounter, uh, some losing trade also, and so on. 
Let's look at the next one if nobody has any question. Setup number two. This is the breakout. This is the breakout. Okay? It's basically, it happened on the last picture before the retest. Okay? It's more aggressive. It's basically the change on behavior of another level. Basically, what you are doing is buying high to sell it higher. You are doing the contrary of what the books said about buy low, sell high, right? You are doing the contrary because this was high, also expensive, if you want to call it that, that way, expensive, expensive. Why you are buying expensive? You are buying high. Okay, why? Because your analysis is telling you that the real uh, value uh, perceived by the other traders is here, it's up. Your analysis is telling you that it's a high probability, a lot of stop here, a lot of buying power above the line that will trigger a good speed to the upside, will trigger a, a lot of momentum to the upside. Okay, this is the breakout trade. Tricky to trade but very powerful, very interesting setup. I trade a lot breakouts. I like them. It's also a change in psychology because the people don't have time to close a trade many times when a breakout happens. It goes so fast. Some people get freeze. Oh, no, it's, it's going up, it's going up, and they don't do anything. Others reverse if they went short and they and they buy. Okay, keep in mind... If you sell here and put your stop above to exit, you need to buy. So you are creating buying power, okay? And also, you need to understand the three kind of entries that are on the market. Okay, this is not from this uh, webinar, but I'm going to do a small, a small update on this. What are the three kinds of entry orders, orders that we can use on Forex? Market order, limit, and, and stops. Yeah, no, don't, don't, don't say one cancel order or, or uh, fill or kill. No, three kind of, of orders to, you have limit and buy and sell stop. And then you have stop loss and stop loss limit. So it's three, three orders. Limit, uh, stop and the stop loss. Okay. The stop loss, it's a mix of a limit and a market order. We have three, market order, limit, or, or stop, okay? And then the stop loss. It's three kind of order. The stop loss, it's a mix between the market order and the limit. Because you are telling the broker, let's say you are short here. You are telling the broker, if price comes above the line, please close the trade at a market price, at whatever price it is, but please close it. Close it. So that's a market. It's an order, a limit, but it's a market entry. So when the price triggers that, it's a market. You are expecting the broker to close the trade at the best price possible. But please close it. I don't know if you have thought about that already, but that's why it's, uh, you get you get on trading very strange momentum to one side because everybody wants to liquidate, close the position with a loss with whatever price the broker is willing to give to them. So, breakout. Breakout entry, very powerful. We're going to look at examples now, so don't worry about that. Setup number three. The failure. The failure. Or fading support, fading resistance, or whatever technical level you want to play. So it's basically all of these three are for going long, for buying, okay? Setup number three, failure. Price is going down. This is support. Previously on the past, exactly. Previously on the past, the people bought. So they expect to do the same. Some of them bought and put the stop below. They get a stopper out. Some of them play the breakout to the downside, and then price reverts. Can you imagine how many buying power is going to be here? How many people is going to be there? How many groups? A lot, a lot, a lot of people reversing there and going, and going long. Okay? You can call it a fails breakout. 
you can call it a failure, you can call it a fail, okay? So, any questions about this, guys, about this three setup? It's very clear. I mean, once you figure out this, these are the only three things that can happen. I mean, there are one fourth thing that can happen that the price is going to be wandering around the level. Let's say price is going down. This is the, 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 the worst setups you can trade, right? And price is going this. No retest, no breakout, no failure, no nothing. Then that day you close the platform. Tomorrow is going to be another day. That's the fourth thing that can happen. <laughs> so once you realize this, it's so simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. It's clear because you have three signals, three setups that can happen. Only three. Choose one or choose or trade the three of them, but try to master one of them first. Go one by one. No, boy, no. These are three main price action setups you can trade. These are, if you think about it, I mean, what can happen? There are more things you can trade, more more setup, but it's not the scope of. At the end, they are based on some of these. All of them, I can tell you, they are based on some of these mechanics. So let's start with some examples directly. Price is going up, swing high here. Remember how to identify areas to make business. The most visible, the better. Okay, also that's very, very, very important. So price is going up, break above 20 pips, 30 pips, then come below. It's a sell signal. It's a sell signal. The same here. We have a visual low. Price is trading below, but is having problems to continue lower. So it's a buy signal there. Okay, what entry is this? What entry is this? The entry is on the circle, guys. What is this kind of entry? Entry number one. Okay. Guys, I say like this, A, B, C. Retest, breakout, failure. So this is number one or A. It's A, a retest. Price make a low, make a low, breakout, change on psychology. The, the level is fresh. It is stopped to the pip. It is stops to the pip. Again, another retest, one low. You can take this retest with only one low. If it's very visible, you can take them. So key things here. You want, I'm going to change color, one second. You want a strong breakout. Very important. You want a strong breakout. Very, very, very important. So, now, where to place the stop here? It's a little bit tricky, where to place the, stops lo the stop loss on the retest entry. There is one good technique that is basically putting the stop at the other side of the trigger or of the breakout candle. So, in this in sense, would be uh, above that candle. You can put this put the stop there above the candle that breaks and changes the the behavior here to the downside. So you can go short there, it worked it two times, and then it start again to come down, to come lower. Okay. Another example. This is Euro dollar. Some months ago, this is now, I mean, I just took some pictures for you, but it's more clear impossible. This is the decision-making point, okay? This is daily daily chart. The others, I think, are intraday. I don't know, intraday, daily chart. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, thank you for asking. Daily charts... You're going to have less setups, 
but uh, more powerful, more powerful, bigger, smaller time frames. You can trade this on a five minute chart and make money, but you need to be faster. You need to be a lot faster. So first entry, what is this? Price come above and then close below. What is that? Yes. And guys, you are going to be thinking now, it's an entry type C. Exactly. 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 Guys, I don't want you to think, nah, this guy is thinking me, uh, all the trades are winner. No, 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 no. Because if you think about it, this is a losing trade of a breakout. This is a losing trade. You go long, it's a breakout for you. You maybe take it. Okay. But the key here is first identifying the decision making point, identifying the trend, the sentiment. So you want to be a buyer mainly. But it's a bull trap, obviously, a very, very big bull trap. So price come above and then trade below. You can go short there with a very small stop loss, depending on your time frame. And then you can trade your stop loss. Every candle, for example, you can play like that, and you can close here or here. It's a very simple technique. You don't need to um, to complicate it. Okay? There are there are a variety of ways to take profit from this. One way is just trail the stop loss and get a stopper out. Another way is to close when you have a contrarian see a contrarian signal. Okay? So. Next, what we have here on this candle, what we have here, how to identify a failed breakout? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain a little bit more on that. How to put the stop on the failure? I usually put it at the other side. I put it at the other side. If this is very big, then don't take it. This is your risk. If it's very big, don't take it. Okay? Or wait for the price to come lower and you can put a small uh, 10, 20 pips stop. But the technical, the best technical level to place is above the, the candle. We're going to look at how to identify breakout, fail, uh, fail, fail breakout now. Okay? Or some techniques to know if the breakout is going to be successful or not. So here we have a B. Very good, guys. A breakout. We have a B. A strong breakout to that. And what we have here, it's a retest. Exactly. Uh, Age always asking the correct. The question is how how to identify that the breakout has failed. I mean, first of all, if you have this candle, I mean, this is a daily candle. I think this is maybe, we're going to look at it now on the chart. But on intraday, we're going to look at it. But on daily, obviously, it's not, uh, it's not good. You want to have a, a couple of closes above. Okay? Let's say these are candles that are that is closing. The more closes you have above, this is what like one point, this is giving two points, and we if we have another candle closing above, then it's one, plus three points because it's three candles closing. It's very positive, very positive. You want to have candle closes. You want to have the price to be accepted above the area, and every time that come below, we go up. Let me continue here. So we have a. Failure, breakout, and a retest here on the euro dollar this this week, this month. I mean, not very. You don't need to complicate it too much. More examples here. Price is expensive here. Good level. We have a breakout entry here. Price is giving you some clues. Price is giving you some clues already. Okay. 
entry type C here already. So you have the breakout here. Price is making higher highs and higher lows. Another breakout here. Retest. Very fast retest. This is what we call a kiss and boot. When price do something like this, very fast, it's another kind of retest. Instead of taking more space to retest the level, it's, it's, it's done in a very fast, in a very fast uh, speed. So this is a kiss and boot, price breakout and retest very fast. And guys, you think, you need to think about the market participants there. What are they doing? What is the psychology? It's like, hey, we break out. No, no, I don't want to lose the train. It's like, okay, somebody else, come on, we are leaving. Somebody else on train? Okay, bye-bye. It's like, okay, anybody else want to get in? Good, boom. If not, there is no chance. It's like another retest here and so on. So now what happens is you have this and this. That high, forget about the thing on the right. Forget about this. You have this only, this leg, and now we are here. What is going to be, why I choose these points? Why? If you were on the last webinar, identify areas to make business. I need you to think. If you don't know, ask or whatever, think about it. Why I choose this? This is more visible for the long-term traders. It's outside the range. It's outside the range. It's not in the middle. It's not in the middle. It's outside. Here it's going to be big stop loss, a lot of stop loss and a lot of stop level. And remember, the book says below it's negative, above it's positive. So we expect a lot of people taking trades there. We expect a lot of people, sorry for the, my bad drawing, <laughs> we expect a lot, exactly, more orders, more people willing to do business, more liquidity equals to more probability of price going either down or either up. But here, well, okay, it's not bad, but... Uh, if it's less orders, it's going to be less people. It's going to be less liquidity. So it's all of that, guys, all of that. So let's go on the next one. This looks like the pound, pound dollar, one high, one high breakout. We have a retest here. If you put the stop below the candle that it broke, you will be safe. Okay. Or you can wait for it to close the candle and go long the next day. But that's a retest. Okay. You need to think that not all the retests are good or are not perfect, like a textbook. What do you think is the difference between this retest what is the main difference between this, selling here, and between, between buying here? Yes, it's an uptrend. That's uh, one difference. The other was a downtrend. What is the difference here on the price? I'm talking about the price. Two highs, breakout, and then what? One price action difference it had. Higher highs? Mm, no. One price action difference. Not really, not really. The difference, the difference is there is less space here. Exactly, less time. This is less space here. So if you go to a weekly chart, it's not going to be so visible. It's not going to be so visible. If you zoom out, it's not going to be as visible as this. It's going to be more like this. 
it's a little bit less visible, so it may attract less buyers. So it can be a, a, a worse setup. But basically that, the time, less time there. It's an uptrend. We want to be a buyer. The same level is still in place. You can go long there. Okay? The same concept. Boom. Let it ride. You can drill the stop until you get a stopper out. Okay? Obviously, if you go short here, you're going to have a loss because of doing business. So this looks a little bit more like intraday. Um, Decision-making point, price break below, a lot of sellers, but then surprise, boom, 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 move to the upside. Two highs, decision-making points outside the range, one test, one test, and then what, ha what happens with the test? Mm, it's not going anywhere, it's not going down. They have the stops here, so you can go long. I don't know how this setup finishes. Maybe we can look at it. This can be maybe dollar tweet. Maybe. Guys. No, it's not possible, guys. I'm speaking. Hello. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Perfect. Guys, where do you think failure, failure setups work better? Where do you think the failures work better? In what market market condition? In what market environment they work the best, the failures? Trending, range, choppy, sideways, sideways, yes. That's the reality, choppy. Choppy and sideways ranging market is where the fate works the better. It's where the, the, the fate works the better. You can have good trades on the trending also, but it's gonna work. Um, it's not gonna work as good as on a choppy on a choppy market. And the breakout, where do you think the breakout is gonna work better? Where do you think the breakout is gonna work better? Yes, yes, pan trending exactly. Trending and the retest, it's a little bit like the breakout. If they work better on a trending market, it doesn't mean that you can have um, good trades on branding market with the three setup. Okay, but it's just a, a note you need to have in mind. Okay, very smart people here today. So a little bit more here, price is going up, makes a high. This is from here, you, you can forget this, this line. Test, price is testing the high, looks like supply is getting in, but look again what it's going. It's going a lot the, against a lot of the speed. So, hmm. A little bit tricky breakout, okay? It's a little bit tricky. I'm going to give you some keys about how to trade this level. What do you think is better, to trade a breakout when the price is fresh? That means it doesn't have moved uh, a lot or the price has moved a lot already. Hello? Come on, guys. Hmm. Some of them say not a lot. Others say move it a lot. Fresh. I will say it's better fresh. I will say it's better fresh. I will say it's better fresh. But, I mean, don't take it for granted because the price is completely, the people, it's completely irrational and this can go on on and on and on and on a lot. But exactly, don't say it's the price. I mean, if the average range in, 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 let's say, 100 pips, and the price already moved 95 pips, and you, the price is uh, approaching a level you want to create a breakout, I mean, the range is complete. 
you need to take all the pieces. I mean, unless there are news or something or something really special that can uh, make the price to move 150 pips that day. But usually, when price is tired, the, maybe there are no breakout traders taking the trade. Okay, but it's a tricky, tricky thing. You need to think about everything, guys. That's how it is. Price action is not that I give you the setups and then no, you need to think about it. So breakout here. Breakout there. We make a low. We make a high here. Another high here inside the range. Price is going up. We have a failure here. And then I move down. You have another failure here. So this is a, a signal to sell. And this is a signal to buy. So you close the trade there. Yes, Vittorio, it's going to be recorded. Yes, Boiki, it's important to consider fundamental. It's important. It's important. Yes. Which I said in the in, in in the in the in the last webinar and on the on all the webinar, which one are the the main market makers on the on the market? Which which guys manipulate the market? The forex market. I said in the three webinars, I <laughs> mean, Vittorio is the one who manipulates the market. <laughs> no, we are not from the same country, guys. No. The central banks, the central banks, of course, you need to look at the central bank. That's how it is, the main players. Another example. This is a decision-making point. We have a breakout. One retest, another retest, boom, price go up. Another, price is going down with the speed. We have a low, very visual low, if you think about it. Very visual low. Price straight a little bit below, around 30 pips maybe, or 20 pips, and then close above, boom, you have your move the next day to the upside. So, I mean, don't say, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, maybe you go short there. You know, maybe. It's not about trade. I mean, maybe you go short there, but then you need to revert. That's how it is. It's the cost of doing business. The cost of being a trader. Again, the same thing. High here. Entry type C. Failure. Price go above. Right below, you can take the entry there, you can put the stop loss there, and then let it ride. It doesn't matter because the concept, uh, Boyki is asking why I don't show the time frame, why I don't show the pair. Because I want you to understand, to realize that it doesn't matter. A chart is a chart. If this, a good pattern, a good system, it's gonna work on the majority of the, on the markets and on the majority of the time frames. You, I don't want you to think, oh, no, but it's worth it because it's only euro dollar or whatever. Or Exactly. Exactly, it works. That's a good question, Steve. That's a good question. How do you decide between A and B when price reaches the level? That means we test for breakout. That's a good question. First, remember... I will say five minutes, Boyki. The lowest time frame, five, ten, fifteen minutes. It's a good time frame. How do you decide? Decide because you need to have the bias and the trend clear. So if the trend is to the upside, you want to be a buyer. You want to be a buyer. Okay. Remember the steps. Identify the trend. Identify the decision-making points put the setup, and go on. So let's move on because time flies. I want to look at the market. Another failure here. Repetitively, this is intraday. It looks choppy. So, again, lows, lows, price move below, go above, 
Another breakout here, so we have entry type C, entry type B, breakout. Exactly. So the same, the same thing here. Decision making point, you have a failure, price is going up, it's moving below, nice trade. You have some clues here. This is one, this is gonna answer your question. Uh, Steve, what do you think if I see the price making this? Going, making higher highs and higher lows, what I'm gonna want to do on the decision making point? Do I want to sell or to buy? To buy? It's so clear, I mean, break out there, boom. I mean, this is nothing new, it's as old as the sun, I'm not gonna charge you thousands and thousands of dollars for this. Okay, if you want to train, if you want to, to top, uh, to top, uh, to achieve top trading performance, this is like a sport. That's another different story. If you want to get coached or to have a mentor, that's a different story. That's a different story. That, yes. But uh, price action, it's for everybody. This is a retest. This is a retest. This is a retest. You have also this small high here. That is where you stop it. And this is another retest here. Okay? So let's go, let's go, let's move on. How to trade those patterns? I'm gonna repeat and then I'm gonna look at the market. You want to trade in the direction of the main trend. Daily, weekly charts. For uptrend, only buy. For downtrend, only sell. Identify areas to make business. The most visible, the better. Because it's gonna be more people willing to do business there. Clear? Three, have the setup planet in advance. You need to have a plan A and a plan B. And even a plan C. That means you are gonna stop trading. So, you identify the level where you want to trade. And then you think, okay, I'm gonna trade maybe a breakout, but if it's not successful, I'm gonna revert. Okay? Quantify the risk, how much you are going to bet on that day, what is your daily limit, and how much you are going to bet per trade. You set a profit target and some rules to exit, trailing the stops or having the contrary signal um, to exit. Take the trade and let it ride. So, guys, what else do you want to look at? Now, it's a very interesting moment. Dollar then, it can be a trend change to the downside. It can be a trend change to the downside. It can be a trend change. A little bit of momentum. The crowd is long. The Bank of Japan, this is the, the, the dollar, uh, this is the yen index. This is the yen index. Okay. I want you to see how price make a low. Then failure to make a low from this decision making point to the pip. Then reverse and we are testing this blue line that if we broke to the upside for me it's a trend change to the upside. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. It can go either way. So be willing to go long or to go short. Dollar gen to the downside. So these are my decision making points, the blue lines. What I'm gonna do below this level. Petja, uh, my favorite currency is the one that has the clearest trend, the clearest price action, clean chart that is moving. Okay, that is clean and that is moving. I don't want to trade Euro Swiss, for example, that is having a range of 20 pips. Exactly. The bias is to the downside. So I'm going to go short below this level. And I'm gonna go long above this level, put the stop, let it ride. Okay, we are on a trend change point, so it can go both ways. Let's look at Euro dollar, very interesting also. This is Euro dollar. We are having some days here of mm, choppy action. Technically it's an uptrend. Technically, it's an uptrend. If we look at it on a weekly chart, yeah, choppy. It's a little bit choppy. But if we look at it in a weekly chart, let me let me remove the line so it's more clear for you. Uh, 
if you look it on a weekly chart, hmm, it's an uptrend. I mean, so what do we want to be here on this market? Exactly. Bullish. So let's see some levels to make some business here. Obviously, this high is an important level. Obviously, it's an important level. And inside this, uh, it's nothing clear. You can go short below this line if you're an intraday trader. And you can go long above that line. And in the middle, you can play this on intra day, a small retest or a small breakout down a little bit. But as long as we are here, my bias is bullish, but it's not clear. It's not very clear. It's choppy. It's a little bit choppy. Let's look at it on intra day. This is intra, 15 minute chart. Mm. So you want to trade here. I trade five minutes, 15 minutes. I'm very aggressive. Get in, get out. I'm an intraday trader. Very aggressive. I don't, I, when I go to sleep, I don't have any position open. So it's less risk because the more time you are exposed to the market, the most, the, the, the more risk you have. So I'm very aggressive intraday. Boom, boom, get in, get out. That means basically I'm going to take, I don't know, from five to ten trades a day, from three trades a day, from nothing. Just being on the screen <laughs> three hours and call it a day. And the good thing about intraday is that some days, in one hour, you make 50 pips or whatever, you close the computer, you go to the beat, take a mojito, and tomorrow is going to be another day. Enjoy the life. That's the good thing about intraday also. So, not very clear, not very clear. We have some failure here. Basically, it's a buy signal, right? This is a decision-making point in the blue line. Not very clear, but I prefer the long side. H4, the thing with H4 is change depending on your broker. But yes, it's a pin bar. Let me low the decision making points fast it's a pin bar of a decision making point a mojito mojito boy <laughs> mochito no mojito yes exactly sugar ram and lime exactly exactly you need to try that you need to try that. <laughs> okay, guys. What per Aussie dollar is interesting to the upside. And <laughs> exactly, if you don't like mojito, something's wrong. What kind of, tra of trader doesn't like a mojito, right? Aussie dollar, very interesting to the upside. Let's see if I can dry, draw a little bit. Very interesting to the upside. We have a failure here. Price looks like it's making high and a little bit of a speed to the upside. So above this decision making point is giving you a positive bias to the upside. So it broke today. It broke today. So it's interesting. Also, it's very interesting the Kiwi dollar. New Zealand dollar versus uh, American dollar. Very, very, very interesting. I'm buying that pair. Where it is? Let's look at it. This is Kiwi dollar. New Zealand dollar versus the dollar, American dollar. So next level is 0 0.8675. Okay, and it's having good room to the upside. We have at least till 88 level. 
We have like 200 pips. It's not too much, but this pair doesn't move too much. We have another high here. So these are our decision making points on the daily chart. New Zealand dollar. You want to be a buyer. We have a breakout here today. And this morning, I think it's this morning. So two breakouts today on the New Zealand dollar. Exactly. The bank raised interest rate. The market uh, took this as a positive thing. So it's my bias is to the upside and the price is confirming it. Exactly. Uh, so what pair do you want to look at it? Euro pound is also interesting. I am buying above the this line. <laughs> it's not summer yet, guys. It's not summer yet. At, at least not in Frankfurt. <laughs> so Euro pound to the upside is looking good. Euro yen and gold. Let's look at Euro yen and gold. This is Euro yen. Mm, it's mixed. It's mixed. And then we look at cable. We look at euro yen, gold, and cable. It's mixed. As I said, the yen can be on a trend change moment. If we break out about above the line on the index or on the dollar yen. So you can see here, you can see here, we are on an area of highs, highs, decision making point, then a breakout. You can play retest here, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Okay? So, and below, you can go short if it breaks with the speed till the next level. This is your target. This is on a daily chart. So, Eurogen, hmm, it's a little bit hard because it's an uptrend technically, but the yen is a little bit strong. So, Try to sell it against the dollar. It's better to buy against the dollar. Gold. Gold is interesting. Gold is interesting. It's not a bad buy. We have a retest today here. It's not a bad buy. I have been thinking about this buy uh, yesterday also. A retest. You can see here. Boom, boom, boom. We are going to look at it on it today. But the level is not fresh. I enter directly. I don't expect to, I don't wait for confirmation. Um, it can go higher, okay? It's a retest. It's a buy. Two highs here, breakout retest. Let's look at it for them. I, it's not fresh because this, it, the level has been tested already on intra. Okay. This is the level I'm talking about. on the box, some consolidation, the box breaks to the upside with momentum, with the speed, and then we retest to the peak there. Last West Wednesday, 1,353, say me. So it's not fresh for me. It has been tested already one time. It's what we call a kiss and boot. So it can go lower now, yes. But this is something you need to take care of the retest. What is the trend on the 15-minute chart? What is the trend on the 15-minute chart? It's down. Kiss and boot. It's down, exactly. Alex, uh, I agree. Is that we do some examples and wanted to look at the market, so you look at it. But next webinars are going to be just market analysis. Okay, so that's fantastic. I want to update you a little bit before leaving. Kiss and boot, uh, boy, kiss the name of this. The, the trend is down. The trend is down. So this retest mm, is down on 15 minute chart, not on daily chart. But uh, so this retest, then it's a contradiction because then you have it here a retest to the downside also. 
you know, so I may wait for a train change on the 15 minutes start to go long there. On daily, it's an uptrend, technically. Fundamental, I'm not very bullish on gold, to be honest. Fundamentally speaking, I'm not, I'm not bullish. Long, long term, I'm a little bit bearish on gold. No, volumes, I don't use volume. It's not needed. It's gonna complicate. It's gonna complicate it. Don't worry about it. I think we have like five minutes. This is, uh, Exactly. This is uh, Market Scope 2.0. Send me an email. Send me an email at carlos at centrated.net and I can answer it, uh, send you the link if you want it. So this is cable. This is cable. It's having some troubles. It's having some troubles. Technically, Below this line, we can get some downtrend. We can get a breakout here of this line, and it can become a small downtrend uh, till this area. I don't know wh when, where it's going to stop, but technically, we may get some down move here on the on the pound cable, on the pound dollar. It's failing. Look at this choppy. Look at this choppiness. Now it looks like we are breaking, but... We need to wait for the candle to close. Send me an email with, with whatever, guys. Send me charts, send me things, send me articles, send me questions or whatever. I love it. So we need to wait for the candle to close. This is pound dollar. I'm a little bit bearish. I mean, this can get into, cons into consolidation, to be honest. Pictures of charts, if you want. This can get into some consolidation here, to be honest. A trend change, mm, the dollar being weak, maybe we don't see a trend change, but we can get into range, consolidation area here a little bit. Uh, what else you say, cable? I don't understand the question, Jorge. The pound dollar is... Too expensive, you mean expensive? Mm. If I think that is expensive, mm, pff, what a question, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if it's high, keep it, keep it in English. Uh, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't matter what I think, to be honest. Let's see what the people think. Let's see what the people think. For me, I see the pound getting into range because the dollar is weak. Mm. Exactly, exactly. There is no intermediate support, as A. Joe is saying. So it can move a little bit. It can trigger some stops of different following guys. It can trigger some stops and move a little bit lower. But again, if we look at the dollar overall, this is the dollar index. It's looking weak. This is another platform. Don't worry. Send me an email if you want to know which one it is. This is just the dollar. This represents the dollar. It's going down. If we break this level, it's going to be weak. It's going to be weak. Yes, Tahit, pound fundamentals are not bad. But I will not sell pound against the dollar. I will send, I will go long euro pound, for example. You can buy here or here. I mean, the yellow line is a nice target. You can go short pound kiwi. It's a nice, nice level. Look at the, the movement we have today. 222,2 pips. <laughs> okay. 222 two, two pips to the downside. It's a big level. So, from this low, sell the pound against others. If you compare this with the pound dollar, it's looking similar, but the pound dollar is not going down. On pound kiwi, yes. So, pound cut, it's an uptrend. It's an uptrend. I will not go short it. Either way, 
So any pair you want to look at it, I think we have three minutes more. Any questions? Any ideas? This is Pound Ossie, Mr. C. This is Pound Ossie, Mr. C. It's similar to Pound Kiwi, Pound New Zealand Dollar. This is a decision-making point, right? Decision-making point, what I'm going to do on that level? Buy. Why? I'm going to trade the three set setup that we have there. Exactly. Either way. Exactly. Exactly. Either way. Exactly. I'm going to go short, and if the price reverses, I'm going to go long. Okay? If I lose four trades or five trades, I reach my loss limit, 2%, 3%, 3% a day. Call it a day. Come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. It's going to be opportunities every day. Don't bet the house in one trade. If you have an edge, the longer you trade, the better. Okay, guys. So now, after all of this, we now speak the same language. We now speak the same language for the next webinars. Okay, now identify an edge, it's, you see it's not so hard. The hardest part is to execute it, it it's to think in probability, it's to be disciplined, it's to follow the rules, it's to wait for the setup to appear, you know, that's, that is the harder part, that is the hard part. So guys, we are here to help, I'm here to help, you can send me a, an email to carlos at completed.net. You can add us on Skype. I love to be here with you guys. It was a pleasure. Thank you a lot, the Gifted Tweet. Thank you a lot, everybody, for being here with me today. And basically, I see you guys on the next webinar, where we just look at the market directly. If you have any questions, any doubt, whatever, send me an email. I will love it. Okay, fantastic. Everything clear? Are you feeling better now, guys? <laughs> ok, ok, ok. Fabio, lo vamos a hacer, lo vamos a hacer en español. No worries. Thank you, everybody. See you next webinar. Have a lovely week. Thank you a lot. Bye, bye, bye.